Hello, I'm Glenn. <laughs> and I'm Amy. And this is Bailey. <laughs> and this is our 2015 Nissan ENV200 fully electric camper van. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. We bought this van secondhand in 2018 for nine and a half thousand pounds, and then we uh, we converted it ourselves to a camper van. You know, I've always liked the freedom that a, a van gives it gives you, and it's fantastic. You know, exploring around Europe, going to climbing destinations, sleeping in the van, you know, having like a base wherever you are. The first question was, is it going to be possible? You know, are we going to be able to travel around Europe? you know, and enjoy the same freedom that we had in our, you know, old diesel van in this electric van. And uh, so far we've had it for how many years now? Like three, three, three years? years, three years. So just gonna give you a quick tour of the van, um, start off um, up front and work our way back. So the van's got a standard ENV200 dashboard there, shows us our range and what battery percentage we've got left. Um, this is the Accenture model. Um, which just came with a rather basic head unit, but I upgraded this unit to an Android Auto auto display. And it also shows us where charging points are and if they're available. The van didn't originally come with cruise control, but I fitted an aftermarket um, cruise control system. The van's got heated seats and a heated wheel, which sounds like an extravagant luxury, but actually, you know, this guy, he loves the heated seat. Um, Thank you, Betty. Uh, but actually, it's actually a really good thing in an electric van because it uses a lot less energy than the, the main the main heater here. So we added a aftermarket swivel seat to this front seat. We've got a little orange catch here. So pressing that starts it swiveling. Bend the seat forward and then can <laughs> complete the swivel rounds. Readjust the back and then slide it back. Nice relaxed van area, non-driving area set up now. So if I get Bailey to move out the way, his seat is <laughs> the driver's seat when we're parked up. Um, yeah, we fitted a lagging table um, stand here, which is great because it allows a, a really flexible table position in a really small space. If I sit back, I can bring it right close to me. So yeah, a great work spot over here. So let's talk about range. So this van is an early 2015 model. It was basically the first electric van that uh, that was available. That's why we were able to buy it uh, secondhand. And so it's got the smallest 24 kilowatt hour battery. That's the amount of energy this van is capable of storing. So that gives a range of approximately 70 miles in summer and about 50 to 60 miles in winter, depending on lots of things like, you know, how fast you drive, how many you know, how many hills and that's you've got to what sort of trade you're driving, driving through. Um, but this, this small 24 kilowatt hour battery, it's not, it's not been available since 2018. So any, the new version of this van has got a range of about 150 miles. And there's quite a few other electric vans now available, um, like the Vauxhall, the Viro E, which all have a range of over 200 miles. So it's improving all the time, just the energy, energy, the energy density in the batteries. But even with um, basically, the, so we've basically got the smallest range of any of any um, electric vehicle um, on the road, really. But we've still been able to drive the van, you know, to Spain, to Slovenia and Hungary, <clears throat> go on these long trips. So what I'm saying is that the public charging network is, you know, just about OK at the moment, especially in the UK. You can go, you know, go anywhere in the UK, basically. But um, it's only going to improve as the range of the vehicles gets longer and the charging infrastructure improves as well, and also the charging speed. So we've got our little kitchen set up here. Um, we have a Smev 8005 sink. So we've got running water from two 25 litre carriers there. We fitted two win a window on either side. Well, we both enjoy having the natural light inside in the small van. Um, it's really nice to keep it light and airy. Um, opens, helps with ventilation of cooking. Yeah, we've got a little cool box down here. So we've got a um, cutlery drawer here, so a small IKEA tray, and we've got a couple of others down here for storage. We have all our 
crockery and um, cooking pots and pans there and usually some maybe fresh fruit, food, bread and stuff, um, which doesn't need to go in the refrigerator, but we want out of reach of Bailey in case he fancies <laughs> a snack. Um, having the boxes we find really handy because um, we can take them inside and you know pack them all up before we're going on the trip and then bring them out. Simple storage unit here. We've got um, some cubby holes for clothes. Um, a really nice little shelf here. Good to be able to keep your tea or your glass of wine um, out the way of everything else um, going on. Oh yeah, um, we've got uh, lights here. Just switch them off. So in a way, electric vans, they're, they're kind of perfect for camper vans because they basically have the world's biggest ledger battery underneath the floor. Um, you don't need to take up any space inside the van. So we've got so much power for cooking They're using our induction cooktop or charging phones or laptops. Um, but also it's got a built-in heating system and a dehumidification, you know, AC, HVAC system that's built into the vehicle. So uh, you don't need to add a diesel heater or anything. It's all just built in a standard and you can run that all night to keep you warm and uh, dry all or your clothes cool if you're somewhere hot. or cool if it's hot yeah yeah old van didn't have any um air conditioning so this, this has been a game changer to have like you know okay helped out run the heat all night um dry all your clothes no conversation at all kind of the advantages to driving electric personally i suppose i'm comparing it to quite an old diesel van to drive um it feels really light and nippy um uh, there's no clutch control starts, which um, I always found a little bit nerve wracking, say like on a steep, windy European <laughs> switchback. Yeah, kind of hill starts are, are a thing of the past, really. Electric vans also have regenerative braking, um, which means as you ease off, as you come off the accelerator, um, you, without kind of putting your foot on the brake, the van will start to slow itself down um, and put that energy back into its main battery. Um, again, it's just a little bit less to do in terms of footwork on the pedals. It sounds really lazy, but it just makes the whole driving experience um, really smooth and easy. Another thing which I find quite nice, say if you're turning up to wherever you might be staying the night slightly late, um, electric vehicles are really quiet. So if you kind of cruise in, you want to manoeuvre a little bit to get into kind of a nice positions so that your doors are going to open onto whatever a good viewpoint in the morning. Um, you feel like you're not disturbing anyone, so that's a nice thing. So yeah, let's talk about the uh, the electrical systems in the van. So like I mentioned earlier, over this van's got a really big battery under the under the floor of the van um, for you know it's called the traction battery, which is 400 volts DC, which is used to drive the van forward. But we can also use that battery for um, you know, powering things in the van. But obviously we don't want to be using 400 volts DC to power your phone. <laughs> it's not going to go well. Um, but the van does have a 12 volt system just like, you know, every, every other van. So under the bonnet, there's a standard 12 volt lead acid battery. So, and we can connect, uh, you know, connect the inverter or uh, you know, all of the lights and everything. They're all running off the van's standard 12 volt battery. So whenever the van is switched on, as it is now, um, you, you can't hear it, it's totally silent. <laughs> Um, it's charging the 12 volt, 12 volt battery um, via there's a DC to DC converter that takes power from the main battery at 400 volts DC and then converts it to 12 volts DC and that's rated at around 1700 kilowatts, um, sorry watts, so we can take 1.7 kilowatts out of the battery without, without depleting it. So um, we've got a 1500 watt inverter that we use to power our induction hub. Uh, which is only actually 700 watts, but that's plenty for cooking really. You don't need to have a leisure battery, so it saves space and weight. So let's go on inside and we'll take a look at how it, how it works. So this is the induction hub here, and it's plugged into the inverter that's switched on. If we are plugged into a hookup for an extended period of time, I can simply just take the hub out of there and plug it into our hookup, um, hookup sockets, which are there, and that's the hookup. It'll hook up consumer unit, consumer unit, which is connected to a 240 volt hookup under the bonnet. Over here, we have more 240 volt sockets coming from the hookup and our solar PV charge controller. Um, uh, so, up on the roof here, we've got a 150 watt flexible solar panel. Um, that solar panel is just used to keep the 12 volt battery topped up. Um, got some roof bars up here at the moment. We take them off on long trips for improved aerodynamics, but they're useful 
at home here for carrying, carrying wood and bikes and stuff around. In our experience using the induction hob, um, cooking a full dinner and making coffee and boiling water for washing up, uh, we'll use about one and a half to two miles of range. So we'd easily be able to cook for, you know, for weeks in the van. So we don't need to worry about, about draining our main battery by cooking. We decided to um, go for a, a rock and roll bed um, just to give us the option of being able to carry a couple of extra people and uh, fit with seat belts and legally rated for, for carrying folk. So there's two levers under here, the two red ones. You push them together and then um, draw the bed forwards. It's easiest to stand outside the van and roll it out, but if it's wet weather and you want to be inside, um, it's possible just one person um, sits on the, the driver's seat and the other one's on the, the passenger seat. So it makes a really comfy uh, small double bed. <laughs> um, Width-wise, it is a standard um, width, the same as you'd have in a T VW T4. Uh, just when it's in a seated position, because our wheel arches are slightly lower than a T4, we were able to have ours kind of customised and um, sit close to the floor, which means we have more head space when it's upright. Um, yeah, that's really good. We had it made um, at JDS Metal Tech in Sheffield. So those guys are really good. So for nighttime mode, we've just hand done some blackout curtains. We got some magnets that um, came with the, some plastic already round. So I was able to sew, sew them straight in. So they just stick to the, to the wall and they're really good. And um, we can have the lights on inside and you can't see anything outside. Um, with the same, same thing, we got a curtain and we just drag that across. Hey, Bailey. <laughs> there we go. So um, it's quite easy to make a, a, nighttime, a nighttime den in the van. Oh, yes. Though Bailey's place is usually <laughs> keeping guard he sleeps on the uh, the front passenger seat there but but for now you can be up here Bailey. <laughs> so this is what the van looks like under the bonnet um, there's no real heat generated under here and there's plenty of space so it's safe to store charging cables and things under here so with the cables removed from the van you can see clearly that we've got a standard 12 volt lead acid battery just the same as any other van that's what we use to power all the um, lights and everything in the back of the van. As, as I mentioned, it's charged from the DC to DC converter from the main battery that's under the, under the floor. It's like having the van running continuously. And this red cable here is my feed, my thick thick cable that runs um, all the way to the back of the van. There's a little hole under there under the driver's footwell um, to, to power all the inverter and everything in the induction hob. This is our 240 volt hookup. So that's a standard, um, standard commando 16 amp hookup socket that powers the sockets in the back of the van. So the fastest way to charge is using this Chadamo connector. Um, this, when you when you turn up to the uh, the Chadamo rapid charger, they they already have the cable attached to them, so no need to bring your own cable for this socket. So this cable comes with the van. This is an AC charging cable. This end here plugs into um, a uh, EV charging station, and this end here plugs into this AC. Um, charge connector here like so like that and that will charge the van in about three hours from an AC um, charging wall box. Um, so this is the slowest way to charge the van from a standard domestic socket. Um, this is a UK plug but you can also get uh, you know European Trico plugs. Uh, it may be the slowest but it's also one of the more useful ways because obviously there's domestic sockets available everywhere. It takes about eight hours. Um, the van actually comes with a cable um, to, to enable domestic socket charging. Um, but I use an open EVSC charging station, um, which gives me a bit more flexibility to be able to choose what current I want to charge, um, charge to. Um, and also I've made up this setup here to give quite a lot of flexibility. So it's, um, it's a three pin socket. Then I use these campsite camp, camping plugs to connect to the, um, the charging station. So this lets me disconnect that and then connecting other adapters I've made up for like European um, Chico plugs. And it also 
um, lets me use this, this Y splitter, which basically allows me to split the power to power both the uh, sockets in the back of the van and the uh, and charge the van at the same time. Power coming in here from the 3-pin plug, which is there, goes into, into this splitter cable. So now I've got two, two power coming in. One of these I can plug into the um, hookup connection and the other one here can go into the charging station. Usually all these cables are like underneath the bonnet, all tidy under there. But I've taken them out so I can try and show you. Um, so now we're both powering the sockets in the van and we're charging the van. Just need to take a little bit of care not to exceed the rating of the domestic socket, which is 10 amps, or the rating of a hookup in the campsite, which is usually 16 amps, but we usually try and keep it below that to not cause any, um, any issues. And then we have some various extension cables and things. So that's basically our, our charging setup. Um, so this all may look really overcomplicated, and that's because I've made it a bit overcomplicated um, because I wanted to do things like have the you know, hookup and charge the van at the same time and be able to adjust the charging rate. But basically you don't need to do any of this. You can just use the cable that comes with the van and that'll work just fine. And especially if you use a, um, a 12 volt, 240 volt inverter, you don't actually need the hookup in the van, the 240 volt hookup. We put it in just because it was, you know, gives another option but you can just keep it simple, keep it dead simple and just use the cables that come with the van. The reason I use this Open EVSC uh, charging station, it allows me to connect to it uh, via my phone in the, from inside the van, and adjust the charging rate and it says how many, you know, how many kilowatt hours we've used and everything. Um, but I'm actually involved in the development and um, manufacture of these units through my, my company Open Energy Monitor. Um, so that, that's why this system is probably a bit more complicated than it used to be, but you know, I'm, I'm interested in all this stuff. So welcome to the back door. Compact, um, functional, but we do manage to fit a lock in. Um, we've put hooks up, so this is often filled with, yeah, coats, waterproofs, fleeces. Instead of compartmentalising this too much, we've kind of left it open um, for most flexibility. Underneath, again, um, we, can, we usually kind of flat pack, maybe climbing gear, pop shoes and, and bits down here. So in this cubby we have um, just keep some ramps in case we're not on level ground. Um, yes I mentioned earlier that we leave the van switched on so we can use the power from the main battery and run the heating the whole time which is really great but unfortunately this van has um, daylight running lights which are a really good safety feature to have but they're a bit annoying the fact that they're on the whole time when you have the van on. So which means if you're parked up in a you know a lay-by or a car park you don't really want to be running your lights the whole night. Um, when you're charging the van they go off so if you plug into a charge point they're not going to be on but if you just want to have the van switched on but not um, you know not, not plugged into anywhere, any, anywhere I had to find a way to turn these off but luckily it's quite simple the easiest way is just to pull the um, pull the relay out of the box there which turns them off but I actually wired a little switch in here so I turn that to off off we go what, what we found is that this van is easily capable of going, you know, 80, 90 miles an hour, not no problem at all. It's got plenty of power. That's one nice thing about electric van is it's got lots of torque and acceleration um, to get you up to speed and, it's, you know, easily capable of maintaining a high top speed. So a small increase in speed has quite a high increase in um, aerodynamic drag. So we tend to cruise at around 55 miles an hour, which we've found gives the optimum uh, speed versus because if we travel faster we need to charge more which is slower so we found it to be faster overall to, to you know, take it easy with the speed so the places we've been to yet we've had two trips down to Spain um, around the UK up to Scotland and in uh, 2019 we did a really big road trip to Hungary mm -hmm. um, going via France Belgium Germany Austria Italy Slovenia <laughs> and then Hungary stopping lots of crags um, along the way and obviously it takes us a little bit longer in an electric van because we have to stop to recharge it and um, it takes about 20 minutes to charge up um, but uh, it is possible it's totally possible and actually it's actually very economic we managed to do um, a return trip to Spain for 150 pounds of electricity which is incredible um, our friends in their VW um, T4 camper van who were with us 
I think it was T5 actually, they spent you know, 500 pounds on fuel. So it's actually a, um, you know, a very economic way to travel and especially suits people who um, are willing to have a relaxed sort of attitudes towards traveling. Charging is actually taking us to some really, really lovely spots. So you can stay on the motorway um, or so there's loads of chargers off the motorway. So if you want a bit more of a, a scenic stop, um, you can head off, plug in in a, a village or town or somewhere in um, quite rural in the, the countryside and you can have a lovely wander um, and discover some cool things along the way and it really makes the journey feel part of the holiday part of the adventure. I always had in the, in the back of my mind when I was driving my diesel van around Europe is that, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, burning fossil fuels and it's just not, it's not sustainable to do long term and I really wanted a way that we could have the same experience but do it in a, you know, a, a lower carbon way. Um, you know, and that, that's what excites me about electric vehicles. Electric vehicles can be powered from renewable generation um, the UK grid is about 50% renewable and getting more renewable all the time. So, you know, electric vans, they, they're only going to get cleaner as time goes on. So they give us a pathway to be able to travel and explore, um, you know, without burning fossil fuels in a totally zero carbon way. And uh, that's, I find that pretty exciting. Thanks for watching this video about our fully electric Nissan EMV 200 um, video and um, with our conversion to a, a camper. And if you'd like to find out more, we've done a full conversion video uh, full conversion blog post with lists of everything we've used and you know how we did everything um, on my website um, Zero Carbon Adventures. I've also got a YouTube, YouTube channel just search for Glenn Hudson or Glenn Hudson on Twitter um, and big shout out to Nate for um, continuing to run his channel really enjoyed watching all the convert you know the house conversion videos and getting inspiration for converting this van um, for lots of other lots of other van videos um, it's been great I'm really looking forward to going on a climbing trip to Spain as soon as we're able to allowed to <laughs> <laughs> and for um, our past trips to, to Europe if you're interested about driving an electric vehicle on trips um, further afield to say example Spain check them out on um, the YouTube channel happy, happy electric driving folks all right thank you for watching <laughs> goodbye <laughs>